All right, welcome everybody. In this video, I want to go back and revisit the differential equation, the logistic population model that we worked with in class, um, which was looking at the rate of change of the population of rabbits. And that differential equation was uh, dp dt is equal to 3p minus 1 over 20p squared. And so I'm going to put a link to this collab document, which is in GitHub, in the description of this video. Um, I'm going to switch to uh, a collab document where we had the solutions um, over here. So uh, in class, we solved this model um, using separation of variables. And then we uh, used partial fraction decomposition to integrate the left side of that differential equation. And we ultimately went through a whole lot of algebra using properties of exponentials and logs. And we were able to find the general solution um, which was p was equal to 60 divided by 1 plus c e to the minus 3t. So I want to talk about a general approach that we can use to solve any logistic model, and then we can take a look at how we could apply that to this differential equation and derive the solution. Uh, so down in the appendix, uh, we walk through this process. So um, if we have a logistic model in general, then we can write it in the form dp dt is equal to minus ap uh, times the quantity p minus l. And so in this case, p is the dependent variable, t is the independent variable, and a and l denote constants that we would be able to find by inspecting the differential equation. So um, in general, what we could do, um, walk through the same process that we, we solved in question four, is we would separate the differential equation so we could divide both sides by p times p minus l. And that puts us at this stage down here. So now we've separated the differential equation, integrating the right side, not very difficult. Integrating the left side is a little bit more involved. So um, we could separate the, differenti um, the left side of the differential equation and write it as a, a sum of two fractions that we could then integrate. So um, let's go ahead and go through some of these calculations, and I'm going to go through them using Python. You could verify these um, doing the calculations by hand if you would like to. So we're going to use the SymPy package that I'm going to import as sim. And in our model, we have t and p as our independent and dependent variables, respectively. So those I've defined in this line of code. Uh, and then we are going to define L um, as a um, constant, okay? So L is defined as a um, real number, which is constant. So this is going to play a role when we integrate things. Uh, Python is going to realize that I'm going to treat L the same way that we would treat a, a number. And so on the left side, we had um, up here 1 over P times P minus L. So that's what I've entered over here. And notice the parentheses around the entire denominator. And this function in SymPy called a part will do partial fraction decomposition for us. So I'm going to run this line of code. And you can see it's now written this as a difference of two um, fractions. And keep in mind here, our variable is p. So if we kind of look up here at how we separated this, this is telling me that m is minus 1 over l and n is also minus 1 over l. So that's where we get the negative signs and the l in the denominator. OK, the next stage is going to be, well, let's integrate each of these fractions. So that's great. Now I can integrate this um, and this. And then um, with integrals, right, we can break up sums and differences in integrals. So I've entered the first fraction over here, which is 1 over L times P minus L. And so this one had a negative sign, um, but I flipped the order of the difference, L minus P to P minus L, um, and that's why there's no negative sign here. Fraction 2, I've entered as minus 1 over L times P. I'm going to um, introduce two symbols. A is this constant that we would identify in the differential equation. And B, I'm going to use as my uh, integration, general integration constant. What we would do is integrate the left side of the differential equation, which was all this stuff over here. 
So over here, we're integrating fraction one with respect to P. That's this over here. And then we're going to add to that the integral of fraction two, which is this one over here, also with respect to P. So that's our integration on the left side. On the right side of the differential equation, we had minus A dt. So we're going to integrate minus A with respect to T. And outside of this integral, I'm going to add plus B, which is some constant. So SymPy, just keep in mind, um, gives us one such antiderivative where the constant is set to zero, and we want to include a general integration constant. So that's why I added a plus B on the right side. And so now I'm going to run this cell, uh, and you can see that the integral on the left side involves a bunch of logs. The integral on the right side is just minus AT plus B, which we could have done by hand probably much, much quicker. So that's great. So now we've integrated both sides, but I would like to find an explicit solution. I would like to solve this for P. And we did that by hand um, when we solved question four, but in this case, let's see how we could use Python to help simplify these calculations. So there is a nice function built into the SymPy package called solve. So this is located in the SymPy solvers um, package. And again, we're going to use solve. So I'm going to import this as solve. And what I'd like to do is solve this equation for P. And when I want to solve this equation, keep in mind, um, we've integrated the left and the right sides. So initially, we've got left integral is equal to the right integral, and we've got p's mixed around. Um, I would like to take this implicit equation and solve it for p. And before I can enter this into Python, I need to take my equation and rearrange terms so that on the right side of the equation, we have 0. So what I've entered in this Python cell over here is um, the result that we got from the left integral minus the result that got from the right integral. And what's implied is that implicit equation is now equal to 0. And I want to solve. We've got a couple of variables in that equation. We have p's and we have t's. But I would like to solve this for the dependent variable p. So that's what this line of code is going to do. Um, and again, the command is solve that I've imported from SymPy solvers. And I'm going to call this equation the solution, S-O-L. So let's run this line of code. Let me clear my drawings out. And let's run this code cell. And out comes this equation that we have for P, an explicit solution for P. Um, this is typed up using you know, Python um, symbols. So we've got the double asterisk for raised to the second power um, and so here's a nice little um, command that we can use to make this output more readable, which is I'm going to convert this equation that we had that I called solution um, into LaTeX. So there's a command that's called sim.latex solution. Um, and we can see the output here um, looks a little bit more latex y. Um, and this is going to be convenient because I'm going to want to kind of paste that down below. Um, when we simplify to find the explicit solution. So over here, I could copy this code and then double click over here and paste it um, into this markdown cell. And just keep in mind that um, you can see there are double backslashes in the LaTeX that was output here. And we just need to convert each of those double backslashes to a single backslash and um, that just plops this formula written really nicely um, down below. And this doesn't quite look like the solution that we got when we solved question four. So we can simplify this expression a bit. OK, and so now let's take this explicit solution that we got from Python, which initially it looks like this, and let's clean it up a little bit so we can identify uh, the solution a little bit more easily. Um, and so at first, we can take and divide everything um, by e by l times e to the l a t minus b. So that is going to just leave one l in the numerator. That's going to give me a one over here. 
and that's going to give me uh, minus 1 over L e to the minus L a t minus b. So um, next, what we can do is try and simplify. So the numerator looks really simple. Let's try and simplify the denominator a little bit. Um, so here I'm going to distribute this minus L to the both terms in the power of the exponent. So that's where I get the minus ALT plus LB. Um, and next thing that we can do is use properties of exponents to take uh, this sum in the power and write it as a product of two exponents, as I've done below. And so this term in red uh, the L is going to be some parameter that we can read from the differential equation, and B is this arbitrary constant that we get after we integrated the right side. So since we have an arbitrary constant in here, this whole expression in red is just going to be some arbitrary constant that is going to be much nicer to just write that as, for example, a C. So um, this expression, this solution that we got for P, we can simplify it to the form of L divided by 1 plus C e to the minus kt, um, where in particular, this um, constant k, that depended on both parameters a and L that we'd be able to determine from the differential equation. So this power that we have in the denominator is um, equal to a times L, and this constant c is going to be dependent on the initial condition. It's not just going to equal the initial population, but given an initial population, we'll be able to determine what that arbitrary constant C needs to be. OK, so now let's apply that general formula that I've written on the left side over here, which was P is equal to L divided by 1 plus C e to the minus kt. Um, let's see how we could apply this to this logistic model that we solved um, before. So notice that this differential equation, dp dt equals 3p minus 1 over 20p squared, is not written in the form where we can directly identify these parameters a and l. So I can take this differential equation and rearrange it to write it in an equivalent form over here. So in other words, I factored out a minus 1 over 20p, and I've rewritten this as dp dt is equal to minus 1 over 20p times the quantity p minus 60. And from this form, we can now identify the values for L and A. In particular, L is going to equal 60. A is equal to 1 over 20. And now I've got all the information that I need to plug into this general form of the solution. So our value for L would be 60. Our value for K would be A times L, which in this case gives me 60 times 1 over 20, which is 3. And let's compare that to the differential equation, the solution that we got when we solved this kind of the, the long way down below. We got exactly P is equal to the value um, L that we identified 60 divided by 1 plus c e to the minus 3t. That 3 came from a times l, which was 60 times 1 over 20. So all we needed to do was take that logistic model, write it in a form where we could identify the parameters a and l, and then we can use those parameters and plug them into the general um, form for the solution for a logistic model.